Good morning. Listen to a little Hunter Hayes this morning. I'm going to turn that off because sometimes I don't think you could hear it. <laughs> All right. Let me get everything working this morning. It is the 18th of July. How about that? All right, just a second here. Got to get everything rearranged. Did you guys notice what I did this morning? I opened up the live stream on the other YouTube channel. <laughs> and I started to look at it and thought, I don't normally do this here. <laughs> I do this on the other channel. So I just got to wait to get my other... Okay, there's my other window. I'm going to click that. I'm going to shoot everybody the link on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks to all 20 of y'all who are with me right now. 21. Make that. At <laughs> 22. Um, okay, just a second. So how was everyone's week? Did you have an eventful week? I'm still working. Still plugging so along. Here. There we go. Okay, get my link. Get on my hoot suite. Okay. Do you guys notice uh, Fifth Harmony from X Factor was just performing on the Today Show? Get my link out. Until 10.30 a.m. CST. There we go. Tweeting it out. Facebooking it out. Go, go, go. Hold on here. Yay! It went. All right. Good morning. Hi, Mariah. Mariah's watching from the treadmill. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi. Oh, my gosh. It's Amanda's birthday. That's awesome. Linda Webb is in L.A. Oh, my gosh. Gracie was at the meetup last Saturday. Oh, my gosh. That meetup was wild. I still am kind of in shock that that happened. Like, <laughs> the people the people who traveled and flew and did all that stuff, I did not expect that, but that was that was really, really cool. Sorry, I keep touching my laptop and moving it around. You can see some of my new things in my background. Yay. <laughs> it, was, it was just fantastic. I mean, there were, I think, like 450 some people who were there, and the line, I mean, there was a big line, actually, and I just and that was there before I even got there, and everybody was so incredibly nice, people of all ages. Um, that, that was one of the coolest things to me was that there were, I mean, there's like the cutest little girl who had to be like, I think she said she was just 12 or 11 or something, and she came in in her little softball uniform, like she was just about to go to practice or something, and she's like, I have to go right after this. I mean, so young and, and cute, and then, um, you know, people who were in there, I think somebody said she was in her 70s, and I just thought that was amazing. So, um, a lot of people saying, say hi to mom and say hi to pup, <laughs> and so I just, that was great. Tyler was there with me. Um, it, w it was just an outstanding experience. I got to meet Kristen Game, who was just the person you imagine her to be, you know, like she is who she is online, same way, you know, just seeing her in person. So I feel like I really gained a new friend there, and that was awesome. And, um, yeah, she is just, she's just great. So I, I love that. And I don't know, I just, I, I so enjoyed the whole experience and getting to talk to you guys and um, hear about where you're from and why you watch and, it was just, it, it was exquisitely run and organized and put together, by the way. That's what makes me nervous about um, doing meetups in the future because it's like, oh, I'm 
I don't know if I'm going to know how to do this as well as they did. I mean, they absolutely, there were security guards like standing out there and um, it was, it was intense and they, they just, Sigma, the whole group just absolutely treated, treated me like a princess and I just, thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good morning, Pittsburgh. Somebody flew from Pittsburgh. Um, a woman named Patty flew in from Pittsburgh for that morning, and I was just, like, she, she brought me to tears because I'm like, I can't imagine anybody doing that. Um, Italy, West Virginia. Um, yeah, I, I found this neat little um, E. It's kind of got, like, big jewels all over it, and I found that at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, I was um, kind of thinking of things to put back on the wall back here. I wanted to, what I wanted to do was brighten, what am I pointing at? What am I pointing at? <laughs> I wanted to brighten this whole area up a little bit. I had kind of a dark urn sort of thing that was holding my topiary, and I had a dark thing on the wall. And so I feel like when I'm using my big light, like my softbox lighting that really brightens me up, it can kind of darken the background. I could get out my second light to actually write it up, but it's a lot of work, you know. Um, so I thought I'd go with just some lighter stuff back there that would pop a little bit more. And so I got the vase um, from TJ Maxx. Vase. <laughs> I got the flowers from Hobby Lobby. And I got that little mirror from Walmart. And I've actually had a couple other things. I don't know if it'll change. I may periodically change it because I got the cutest little um, mirror thing from Hobby Lobby too. And it says love. It says L O and then the V E so are down below. So it's like a square and it's all completely mirrored. And I thought that would be really cute back there too. But I do like the white, the white, and then I've got white doors. So I don't know. I'm just um, messing around with it a little bit. Uh, right now. Um, I'm going to refresh this page real quick. Yeah, I have to open two windows because the way this, this is, and I hope Google you know, improves it with time, but you can't see, if you're broadcasting a live thing, you have to open up a whole other window so you can see comments coming in just like everybody else's. Otherwise, you don't see them anywhere. Um, Portugal, oh, thank you guys, and thank you so much. There are so many people who said, I would have loved to have been there, but I just couldn't, you know, travel or couldn't be there for whatever for whatever reason, and I mean, thank you for even having the desire to want to be there. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yes, I love Hobby Lobby, too. You can spend so long in there. And they were, um, like, busily getting all the Christmas stuff ready. Like, I think they've had the trees up in Hobby Lobby for a while, but now they're, like, filling up those extra aisles with all the Christmas decor and everything, and they've got their fall aisles all done. So it was it just kind of strange <laughs> being in there. Um uh, Miss Amanda French is getting married next week and still can't decide on a lip color. Um, well, I kind of like to think of that in terms of, you know, what what are the colors of your wedding, you know? Um, because I think the lip is almost like an accessory in itself, especially if you're working with brighter colors. Like, if you've got red, I mean, I think red lips would be a fun way to coordinate yourself a little bit. Um but generally speaking, um, one of the most universal type of shades that looks really good on a lot of people is this kind of a color. And it's very ref reflective and pretty and kind of neutral. And this is the Revlon Gloss in Rose Pearl. And anybody I've introduced this to, like friends in real life, they've been like, oh my gosh, I love this color. And it's just such a pretty, um, it's like a pink but a little bit deeper, and it has the most beautiful um, shimmer to it without seeming like thick and frosty. I don't know, it's just a nice, nice shade. Yes, Christmas stuff already! <laughs> and they were putting it all up. Hobby Lobby is like the, the king or the queen of <laughs> Christmas stuff.
Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. This is a uh, TJ Maxx find, this little shirt, and as you can see, it's one of those sheer shirts, so I had to put a put a tank top under it. This is a family show. Um, yes, Aaron, let's be friends. <laughs> oh, so hot. Um, yeah, it, it, it's been in the 90s here lately, um, so we're just under what they what the meteorologists say is a dome of high pressure <laughs> oh yes yeah I'm I have been emailing and asking some different uh, locations in st. Louis about meetup stuff so I hope to have something nailed down soon but I probably should have seriously um, started a lot more intense intently on that um, way back because this is not an easy thing to do oh CMG blue is watching from the from her hospital bed while recovering from my appendectomy yikes oh my gosh I hope you weren't in too much pain before that some people just like getting that excruciating pain I guess that's how you know you need one though right Hey, Taser Fun used Rose Pearl for her wedding and loved it. Yeah, it is, you know, if, if you're just not a bright lip girl or if you don't want to go to the reds and the pinks, even if they are a color in your wedding, I think this this doesn't clash with anything and it just gives your lips the little bit of, you know, pop that they need. So, yeah, I'm going to do face of the day. I'm going to do, I oh my gosh, guys, I have notes. I have certain things I want to discuss. <laughs> Yes, I do. And I'm going to have another sip of my coffee. I don't know if any of you are into golf, but the British Open started. And, of course, it's overseas, so it's in a different time zone. And it started at 3 o'clock this morning, our time. And so last night, Tyler says, so are you going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning with me and start watching the British Open? And I'm thinking, are you? Re I'm thinking he's not really gonna get up and do that. He's gonna say he is right now, but it's not gonna happen. And so he did. And then I'm like, well, I'll get up too. You know, back to the old days of early wake ups. Only I was waking up at like one in the morning, and I reminded Tyler of that. <laughs> but um, we got up. I think I watched for a solid hour, and then we were both asleep on the couch. <laughs> so. That didn't last long. Walmart has back to school set up and it makes me want to cry. <laughs> I remember feeling that way too when back to school would be happening in, you know, like early July or even late June, and I'd be like, it's too soon. Much too soon. <laughs> um, thoughts on beauty blenders? I have not yet tried the real, legit beauty blender. I know I need to. Um, but I've tried the Soho kind, which looks kind of like, um, maybe I have it here. This was really delicate, and it tore. It had has little tears in it after I washed it. So it's, I don't know, it's delicate. I like the softness of it. Texture-wise, it's really nice, but I think the Real Beauty Blender is more durable than that. But it's nice for, you know, blotting on foundation or um, so another way I like to use it is you can dampen the sponge and if you've got a thick cream foundation or like a thick concealer I think I use this with like the time balm type stuff you could really use any kind of sponge but dampen the sponge and it takes those thick thick creamy products and makes them a little bit more um, slightly more diluted and stuff so Oh, Ginger, thanks. Ginger says, my hair is healthy and shiny. How do I get it that way? Um, well, I um, I kind of outlined some of the products in that Frequently Asked Beauty Questions video, but lately, like, the stuff I've been using has been that the Suave Naturals in Rosemary Mint, and um, that's, it says on the container compared to Aveda, and they work great, and um, probably once, maybe twice a week, I'll do the balms, uh, deep conditioning mask type thing which is just something you like I put it on the length of my hair down here and I leave that on for a few minutes in the shower and then rinse it out and that I mean 
I feel like I can get away with using less expensive shampoo and conditioner because I've got that really nice deep conditioner on. So, um, and then I've been using the styling oil, the got to be styling oil, um, and I just use that again on the length of my hair. And my hair's been cut a little bit recently. It's got those new layers in it that my mom added in. Um, but I, I do that styling oil and I do it before I blow dry or before I use the curling iron and that just keeps everything really nice and soft so um, I think that's that's just kind of my my plan what I do um, Paige says I met your husband on the golf course a couple weeks ago oh my gosh Paige um, I <laughs> I think he was telling me about this. <laughs> that is so cool. I am not often on the golf course myself. <laughs> but I'm I'm planning to be because I after, you know, doing a little practice in the backyard recently, I'm better than I thought I was. <laughs> but I'm not great. So I don't want to <laughs> get anybody's hopes up there. Um Oh, CMG Blue said it wasn't too bad, actually. She's the one who had the appendectomy. Um, okay. I'm going to refresh this page real fast because I got a little, little stalled. But um, something I did want to... Oh, oh, was your mom a professional hairdresser or just really talented? Um, she did it for a living. That was her... Um, thing her career for a while and she you know went to beauty school as she called it and um, she was great like she um, won different awards for you know different hairstyling stuff and they were doing you know the big updos and the styles that people would want done and then they would like leave their hair in them for an extended period of time um, so she was just super talented with that and so she has always uh, cut my hair she's done it in different cuts and stuff and I think um, when I was talking about mom being the only one who's cut my hair in a video somebody said you know once you start getting layers in your hair you're gonna have to go get somebody else like like mom was just doing this as like a, a little mom you know favor but no she's done this for years and I always have layers in my hair <laughs> so she is she is very talented um, Oh, thank you, Brittany. Um, yeah, the the Mall of America makeup that I did. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think back to like the things I used. I used my since I was wearing kind of an orangey dress. I used that uh, Sigma palette, actually the Dare one that has all those pretty oranges in it and peachy shades. And so that was what I used. And I used as my crease color. There was a plum in there, so it made it look really different. I thought kind of a similar format to what I like to do for you know a dramatic eye, but it um, using the plum with the peach looked really nice. Seven-year-old daughter Nadia says hi. Hi, Nadia and Patsy Ann. <laughs> and Beauty got a puppy this week. Oh, my goodness. Um, what's a good small vanity mirror to buy from the drugstore? Um, I'm not sure what your drugstore, or maybe you mean Target, to, because I don't, I don't really see, like, vanity mirrors at Walgreens or anything like that. The last one I had before getting the one from Vanity Girl Hollywood was, I believe, a Revlon brand one, and it had several light settings. Um, it was lit all the way around the mirror. Like, picture this mirror, but bigger, and the light went all the way around, and the mirror would flip to a magnified side. So it was nice. The lighting was never quite as bright as I wanted it, but things, it's been a while since I've used one of those, just, you know, like little tabletop mirrors like that. So there may be some better ones out there, and I know Bed Bath & Beyond has a pretty big selection. So Journey Patterson says, is she how you got interested in beauty, do you think? Um, probably talk about my mom, and, I, you know, I think to an extent, like, she was just an example to me through all my years growing up. I mean, mom was always looking, I mean, more glamorous than the average bear, I would say. <laughs> and, I mean, just hair always done, makeup on, outfit, 
together, you know, just very put together. And so I think that influence was always there, but she never was one to like make me do any of that stuff. Like I said, I should have had my unibrow plucked far earlier <laughs> in life. But I mean, I, it was totally, you know, my decision when when I wanted to to buy makeup in the store, it was like, hey mom, you know, can I have a mascara? Like, <laughs> I remember that being one of the first things I'd asked about getting outside of like a powder or a lip gloss. And so that was really my my choice. And I was always kind of intrigued with her like makeup desk and her stuff and looking through her purse. But I think that's kind of a natural kid thing all around. Every kid wants to dig through mom's purse. <laughs> but um uh, it, w it was really something where it wasn't like mom was ever putting me in pageants or not that that's a bad thing at, at all. I think pageants would have been fun actually, but I mean she never really pushed me into any sort of glamour type stuff. It would just kind of was my my own interest, probably a little bit influenced by her. And then once I got into like later on in high school, into college that interest really grew for me so Kristen says better late than never hashtag listening at work <laughs> well Kristen I've already done talked about you <laughs> while you weren't here it was all good things though so don't worry <laughs> Sophia's here oh oh my gosh Sophia's grandma is better and her nephew was born on Monday yay good news that's awesome. I've been thinking about you. Yeah, ma mascara was one of those like, okay, now I'm really using makeup, right? Like when you finally got a mascara, you could be using some powder, you could be using lip smackers and lip gloss, and it was like, okay, but mascara was real makeup. So I think my first mascara was the CoverGirl Professional Mascara. It's in like a blue tube. And uh, I don't know if they still, do they still make that? Um, Mariah, I have a ton of Makeup Geek eyeshadows. Makeup Geek sent me some makeup. So I have, like, lots. I don't know. I haven't checked her website to see if she sent everything. But, I mean, I'm shocked if there are more than what, than what was sent to me. So... Yes, um, my thoughts on Talia, the, um, that was and continues to be really hard to take. Um, if you guys, I don't know if you're familiar with Talia, um, but she is a 13-year-old um, who makes beauty videos. She's adorable. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about because she just, um, she gained a lot of recognition through like the Ellen show and had so much support through that. And I mean, just, I can't think of a person who wouldn't just adore her for who she is and her attitude. Um, I think the attitude was the whole thing with her, um, because she would, you know, make her videos and, and not um, not treat it, treat the situation like anything was wrong. And I don't think she wanted people to treat her like she was any different, you know? But, I mean, for me, I think this whole situation just puts it in perspective with, you know, the little problems that we have day to day. You know, what does that really amount to? Not really that much, right? When you think about the battle she was fighting, every single day and still managing to put a smile on her face. So I just think she is precious and um, I just love her. And I think um, what really kind of got to me the day that I found out the afternoon of, the, you know, the day that that happened, um, somebody tweeted me and said, did you hear about Talia? And I hadn't, and so, and I was just on Twitter, and so I searched Twitter for her name, and then I saw, you know, that, that she had passed away, and in the stream of the tweets saying, you know, she had passed away, or rest in peace, Talia, um, I also saw somebody say, uh, a really insensitive tweet, somebody said, um, and I couldn't believe my eyes, but they said, uh, it's too bad that she's gone, but I don't understand so many people feeling so bad about someone they've never met. 
and I just kind of thought maybe I'm so deep into this YouTube thing but I feel I mean the attachment I think you can feel to people you watch on online or just like a person you might watch on TV I think is very strong you know and I think the the feeling um, it's all about the way someone makes you feel you know and whether that person is a friend in real life or someone you um, watch on online I think we can all have very heartfelt experiences you know with these people we watch and and so I think absolutely you feel that loss you know and you feel that that sense of just no it's okay um, but I, I just I just wanted to say, you know, that I, I'm thinking about her family. I'm thinking about her sister who posted a sweet video. I saw that on the um, Angels for Talia Facebook page, and her sister got on and she she said, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine being a sister and getting on and saying, you know, my sister passed away and having to make that kind of a, just to even say those words, you know, I. I, I couldn't quite like put myself there. You know, you try, you really try to put yourself in someone else's shoes, but unless you've experienced that, I mean, you can't really know how that feels. But um, I think her sister just seems like uh, so sweet. And she was talking about wanting to, like Talia was wanting a, a makeup line or she was wanting, you know, to do these additional things with her life and she had these goals and that um, Talia's sister and her mom are going to try to make those happen for her and make her legacy live on and I think that's awesome but honestly even if they did not one thing, one more, if, even if they, they didn't do any of that, I think her her message has been felt you know her she just lived with an example for everyone of, of positivity and you know letting your light shine no matter what's going on and I think that will will totally be be what's felt you know regardless of it, if nothing else happened I still think she has left her mark is what I'm trying to say so um, yeah and that's I, I don't want to be like well, this is a sad beauty broadcast, but this is a, this is real life, you know. This is a sad thing, and um, yeah, prayers for her sister and her mom, because they're obviously. I mean, you can imagine that loss for them, or try to. It's just got to be huge. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The YouTube community, Taser says, the YouTube community is really close-knit. Even if you don't personally know them, the connection is very real. And I believe that, too. And I believe some of us uh, are probably forming closer connections through our online interaction than maybe we are with some people, you know, just that are kind of in and out of our daily life, like acquaintances. Um, so, because I do think this all becomes very personal. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that up, and I, yeah, sorry, I'm getting in that mode where I'm reading the comments and just saying, <laughs> agreeing with them. Um, I'm going to refresh this page because it stopped on me. Um, but that's, and I believe some oops. of us are, ah, <laughs> mute that, mute that. Um, Yeah, she was adored, and she'll continue to be that way. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that people she will be remembered. And I know she's you know left a mark, left a mark on me because it, and it's it's a big one because it's not just you know oh she was you know she was cute or she was great at makeup or because those things are true. But it was really just a way of living that I think influenced me. So. Yeah, so I'm sure her family, if you've been on her on her Facebook page, appreciates all the all the support. I mean, they've said that that it means a lot, and I think I, I do think we can all make it. Perhaps as hard as I'm sure it is, we can all make it. You know, slightly easier just by being supportive of them. So, 
Yes. Yeah, YouTube draws us together. It does. Um, 18 Rumpel says, honestly, I don't have very many friends, especially at school, but every day I get to come on here and watch my YouTube friends, and it feels amazing to have you all. And I feel, I feel that way, too, you know? As far as close, close people who really share your passion, there's, it's, it's amazing that we have this outlet to connect, because how might we have met otherwise? You know, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, um, oh, thank you, um, Megan asked about, <laughs> on another note, <laughs> on an op opposite end of spectrum note, uh, Megan said, where did you get your orange dress for the meetup? That was from Ross, a uh, $20 dress. So I'm sorry, it just feels <laughs> feels weird going from topic to, to. I know we go all over the place with this, but this is just it's a, hard, a tough topic. So <sighs> but I think uh, what you do is. You, when any time you have some kind of a big loss in your life, you kind of think about how can that person, you know, how how can I make that person kind of live on through me? So I think Talia is going to be living on through a lot of people because she touched so many people. So <laughs> Betsy says, even my husband asked me, "Did you watch him today?" <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love you too, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, like, I think I mentally think, she's got to be older than 13, right? You know, doesn't didn't she just seem, I don't know. She had a, a maturity level, which I'm sure, you know, her circumstances brought to her, you know, the need to be a more mature and, and you know, just to be able to cope with everything. But she's just 13. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Talon just got here. We were talking about Talia, and we were just talking about, you know, that was just the huge thing in the YouTube world that happened this week, and we're all just kind of sad over it. Um, Chris says, as a former news anchor, what story did you cover that really touched you the most? Um, I'm trying to think of stories that I personally reported on and I had a really uh, one of my earlier weekends of, of reporting when I was kinda newish to it I had one of the most tragic things happen um, and I was reporting on the weekends and there was a woman whose um, her her daughter was shot and then, and so that was a whole, you know, I mean, that was an investigation. That was a lot to cover. Um, then the following night, her son is killed in a car accident. So you just had this horrific weekend. And it was like, I come into work thinking on Sunday, thinking I'm going to be following up on, you know, what had just happened. And this was a huge story with her daughter. And and then I find out, you know, oh my gosh, her son was in an accident. She's lost two children in separate incidents, tragic incidents, just unexpected, horrific things. And um, so that became that day's story. And then I go back to work on Monday and it was like, there, there's always a, it's a very sensitive situation when you think about um, somebody who's been a victim of a horrible tragedy and you think about talking to the relatives about it. Um, some people would say that's an awful thing to do to approach 
someone and say, you know, talk to us on camera. It's you, you but yet some people really want to share. For some people, sharing is therapeutic, and you know, letting this is their opportunity to let the viewing area know, you know, about you know the profound loss that they're experiencing and how wonderful they were. And so, I remember interviewing her um, on like the following Monday and and finding her, and, and we talked, and I mean, it was just I, I learned about a different, you know, news is different then. I you cannot be that kind of I never felt like I was a cold question kind of person, you know, quick question. Like, I I really felt like I was having a conversation, and we were really, you know, connecting over that. But that was very sad. I've just had a lot of tragic stories that stick out in my mind where I couldn't believe I was talking to somebody after something so awful happened in their lives. Um, but I did a lot of stories like that. Really, a really touching story too. I did a lot a series of stories called Unsung Hero and that was where um, we would honor a person who had been nominated like the story idea was coming from viewers and so they would email in and say you know this person um, this person was uh, doing some amazing deed for me I think they should be featured on the news and so we'd go and, and hunt them down and find them and talk to them and what, there was one story where this family lost um, a uh, big part of their home to a fire, um, but they wouldn't have even known that their home was on fire had their next door neighbor not run over and knocked on the door and, and ended up getting in the door, um, calling out to them, woke them up out of bed, said, you know, it was like the opposite end of the house was in flames, um, helped get their dogs out. I mean, it just, you know, good neighbors, and it, it was just kind of interesting because that fire happened in the middle of the night. The guy happened to be awake, saw what was going on, and I mean, the interviews with them were just amazing because, um, you know, even though their house was needing all this work and it was so heavily damaged, it was like they were just thrilled to have their lives and have a neighbor who cared enough to get in there and help people. So, I don't know, I'm probably talking on more than you want to hear, but that's the kind of story I got to do on a pretty much weekly basis, so that was one of my favorite things about news. And that's why when I hear people, you know, kind of bash news or talk about that news isn't good, um, I don't know, um, local news has a lot of positive points. It really does. And local news, everything from getting those stories out there to stories where, you know, police are looking for this criminal. You show the mugshot. I don't know how many times we've shown, you know, or you show the surveillance video or a surveillance picture of someone, and then thanks to the news, that person was caught. You know, somebody said, I know who that is. You know, I'm calling the police. And and so there are many amazing um amazing things that happen as a result of news and I don't think that should be overlooked. Yeah, um, more stories about news that would, yeah, that could be a fun thing for the vlog channel because I know a lot of people um, are studying that. And it's just so funny because you can't, you can study, study, study on how to write a news story and how to, you know, get your news writing just perfect and all that, but the things that you can't possibly prepare for are dealing with people in very difficult situations and knowing how to approach them and tact, tact is so important because people can pick up on that like nothing. You know, the way you approach somebody, being just being yourself, you know, not being like, I am a news reporter, so therefore I must approach you in your time of crisis and then ask you question, burning questions at, at rapid fire pace. You know, it's like that goes out the window, and you just become go back to being a human. Thank you, and so, yeah. <laughs> um, emotional vlogcast. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, what Mac eyeshadows are best for green eyes? Um, let's see. I'm thinking shades like maybe Star Violet or some of those. That's kind of a pinky, um, purpley shade. Don't some of those pinks and mauves and purple colors really do good things for green eyes? Tell me, green eye girls. 
but this is Star Violet. That's just one that I have. Oh, this one was was <laughs> this one was kind of depotted, and then I was like, oh, it won't fit in my palette, so it's not really stuck in here anymore. This is a very beautiful shade, kind of mauvey, purpley, pinky. Not not looking good. I forgot webcams do swatches no justice. Um, do you want to talk some makeup, by the way? Um, did you ever write for a school newspaper? I think I had to do uh, a few things just like work as a workshop, they would call it, because we had a campus paper, a radio station, TV station, and most of what I did was for the campus TV station. Um, but we did did a few things for, for the newspaper. So, yep. Um, okay, a couple things. I wanted to talk about, I was featured last month on IT Cosmetics Facebook page. I think they called it like IT Girl or IT Blogger of the Month or something like that. And so as a result of that, as a thank you for that, thanking me for them featuring me on their Facebook page, okay. Um, <laughs> but they sent me some new things to try. And so I thought I would let you know what they ended up sending me. And... Um, what I could be reviewing for you. One thing they sent was the number 50 Serum Collagen Veil Anti-Aging Primer. Uh, this says 50 plus hydrating anti-aging peptides, essential lipid rich oils, vitamins, extracts, and botanicals. And I love the way this feels. Ooh, it's silky. It's silky, but it's it's definitely like got a little moisture in it. So I really like this so far. I've been using that several times. Um, they sent the CC cream. This is Your Skin But Better CC Plus Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream. They're calling this Full Coverage. Okay. I've used it once. Um, is it the fullest, co fullest coverage of anything I've tried CC cream wise? Probably is the most um, the most coverage, but I still don't know if I'd call it full coverage. Mm, I need to use it some more. Um, but it's SPF 50 plus, it says, and it comes with this little pump style. And somebody, <laughs> this is so funny. I've never, I don't know that I that I've ever had this happen before, but um, somebody on the I think Beauty Broadcast Facebook page was telling me asking me if I'd try this and I said no I haven't you know I've got quite a few like CC BB things that I'm trying to use up but if I if I get it I'll do a video and she said well I've contacted it cosmetics and asked them to send it to you <laughs> like, I'm, I don't think that's ever happened uh, but thank you for if you played a role in them choosing to send this to me thank you um, but yeah this I have it in the medium shade so I'm gonna be Continuing to use it, I've only used it once. So, what else did they send? This is an interesting thing: tight line, full lash length black primer. Um, so this is a teensy little brush. I don't know if you can see the bristles, but you can use this like a lash primer, or you can get like right in there to the very base. And they say you can actually use this as a tight lining product. Like I'm, I'm talking get in there like you would with an eyeliner right at the base and use that to get right in between your lashes onto your lash line. So that's interesting. I have used that. Um, I think it's cool for that tight lining purpose. As far as being a lash primer, I didn't think it added much to my lashes, but this is another thing. I'm, I, I know this isn't the most helpful when I'm like, I've only used it a time or two, but I thought it would be interesting to tell you what you know, what's new anyway. Um, a couple of these Vitality Butter Glosses. This shade is called Naturally Pretty, and this shade is called, I think, Pretty in Pink. So that's what those look like. Very pretty shades. Of course, I like pink, right? So... Yeah, um, these have a beautiful texture to them. They um, very com are very comfortable on the lips, nice pigmentation. I mean, so far I can't really find anything to, to complain about, <laughs> about them, so I'm going to keep using that and move this stuff over here. And then lastly, something that I thought was really neat. They, this says, It Cosmetics Lab Sample. 
and I know this is something they sell. This is the Vitality Butter Gloss in News Anchor Blue. And the story behind this, I got online so I could figure out what this was all about, but apparently Jamie Kern, Jamie Kern Lima, who is one of the, um, she is the, the kind of the person behind It Cosmetics. I know there's tons of people, but she's sort of the face of that brand. And she's a former news anchor, and she said she would crush up a um, blue eyeshadow and mix it in with either like a clear gloss or Vaseline or something and put that over her lip color to make it that blue toned product that makes your lips makes your lips look whiter, makes your teeth look whiter. Okay? So she now has formulated a blue tone gloss that will apparently make your teeth look whiter. So <laughs> I just been looking into that and why she made that. I thought that was cool. Obviously, I'm attracted to something that was made by a news anchor. Um, uh, this shirt is from TJ Maxx. This little shirt here with the polka dots. Ooh, big trailer going by. Wonder what they're picking up. Um, okay, let me. Like I said, I made a list. But let's see um, what your questions are. Are it cosmetics sold in stores? Um, I'm not thinking so. I know it's QVC.com, It Cosmetics um, website, and does Beauty.com? I think Beauty.com might sell it too. She's been looking into that and why she. Yeah, um, the QVC website is where you're going to find those like multi pack type kits. By the way, um, there's a new video coming today, and it is oh, there's a cement mixer. Something big's happening down the street. <laughs> um, what I was going to say was uh, there's a new video coming today, and it is my top ten high-end products worth trying. Um, I'm very excited about it because I thought about it for a long, long time. So, um, and I, guys, I the, the video that I edited, the amount of video I shot, I don't know what happened, but I sat here and talked for... 40 minutes, 40 minutes I spent shooting that. And so I narrowed that down. I chopped that down to, I think, around 14 minutes. So if anybody tells me 14 minutes is long, <laughs> I said, you, would you like the uncut version? Because <laughs> it's way longer. I just got off on a on tangents. I mean, if you shoot videos, do you ever find that like some days, you know, you're to the point, you're saying exactly what you want to say, and then some days you ramble like there's no tomorrow. Good night. Avon. Yes. I have a basket of Avon stuff that's going to be like seriously an upcoming video coming soon. It will be my reviews. And it's not just going to be a haul. It's going to be my reviews on the recently purchased Avon stuff and what I think of it. Because there's been some good, some kind of average, some stuff I really, really like. So, uh, Saturday I'm going to an homage event for my dad for his 57 years as a journalist. That's cool. And I'm going to need a waterproof mascara. Have you tried any of Essence's Waterproof mascaras, recommendations? Um, no, I have not. I have not tried any Essence waterproof mascaras, but my um, my waterproof mascara of choice is like the uh, CoverGirl Clump Crusher water resistant or the CoverGirl Lash Blast waterproof version. They are they they work very well for me, and they've worked well for. Um, a lot of brides too, so that's always, you know, if it works for the bride, it works for all the crying bridesmaids. Um, a taser just made a 20 minute blooper reel. I'm so afraid that it's too long and not funny. <laughs> I bet it's funny. <laughs> BB Uncut. This is BB Uncut. <laughs> Welcome. This is from TJ Maxx. Yep. It was, uh, I think, $12 maybe. Um, Mark, yeah, Mark is under the Avon umbrella.
Okay. Yeah, thank you. Oh, they don't have CoverGirl in Portugal. I had a feeling. I had a hunch. Um, um, I'm not sure because I, I honestly don't buy a lot of waterproof mascara. It's like I keep one or two just in case. And then I, I'm normally experimenting and using a lot of other kinds. But I don't know. If Essence has a waterproof mascara that's as good as, like, this stuff, <laughs> um, I would say maybe try it. I know you don't want to probably reach out blindly using something that you're not sure how good it's going to be for an important event. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Linda would love the 40-minute video. Thank you. <laughs> No, <laughs> I appreciate that. I truly do because I don't know how I talk that long. But okay, here's my other kind of announcement, sort of not really an announcement, just observation thing. Do you guys remember in my haul where I talked about this this neat little duo from Maybelline, the pink suede? Really pretty, um, like your your taupey, rosy, weird kind of brown that's awesome, and then your goldeny pink. So I tried that. I realized I had an older one in my collection too that I've had for a while. I think I got this when I was on a on a dupe search, but this is brown tones. Very natural, neutral colors. Okay, I like this too. And then recently, Maybelline was buy one, get one 50% off at Walgreens. Can you guess what happened? Yeah, I bought one and I got one 50% off. And I got two new two new kinds. And I like them, but guys, they perform 10 times better if you'll use the base with them. And I'm not just talking a primer. Primers are good, but I'm talking like a creamy base. Um, for example, this one from Sigma is the uh, Bear, from the Bear Collection, it's Persuade. Like any kind, it doesn't have to be this one, but any kind of like a real um, cream or white colored base. Because this duo in Shocking Seas, is awesome. This is a like a teal. I'm wearing that shade actually, like a light turquoise and a navy blue. And then for the natural girls, this duo in dusk. OMG. Kristen, this taupe is calling your name, this little one right here. And it's like a very light pearly shade with a little bit of pink in it. And I'm thinking I should probably swatch these and take pictures of them rather than try to do it here just because we're all going to get frustrated and they're not going to show up the way I say they will here. Um, but really, with a base, these are so nice. Same with the sunbaked neutrals. It's just, you know, I'm wearing a base pretty much every time I put on eye makeup, so it's not another... I don't see it as another step for me, personally. But I just thought these are really nice. And this shade, this bluish shade, is actually rather matte and really impressive. Um, so that that would be a bloggable topic. Um, trying to think what day I don't already have a plan for on my blog, but I'm going to put a blog, swatching, Maybelline duos. I'll just swatch them all, and you're going to be impressed. You're going to be like, what? Yeah. Um, but the, with the base, with the base is the key. Um, but today's blog is going to be my review on this guy, the Magic Nude Liquid Powder. So I've used that a few times. Um, last time we talked, Taser told me, try it with a brush, because it says don't do it with a brush. I've tried it with a brush, and honestly, I don't think it um, makes a difference. I really don't. The only thing is with your fingers, you can really feel it changing texture. In going from liquid to powder, and with the brush, you can't really tell, but it is happening. I mean, uh, oh, Sophia says she's going to borderline ugly cry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Um, I'm going to refresh. What songs do you guys like right now? I listen to a lot of songs on the plane to Minneapolis. The brush, and honestly, I need that. Okay. <laughs> oh, Journey Patterson, I don't think you're crazy. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, what, was, what else was I going to say? Can you do comparison makeup removers? That'd be a good one. Eye makeup removers, particularly. Um, Valerie says, what shade of the Ben Nye powder do you use to set under eye concealer? Um, well, Valerie, the, the yellow, um, let's just have a little chat here. <laughs> um, and let me burp first. Thank you. Um, this is the Ben Nye banana powder. This, I think, is more effective on deeper skin tones because I can use it but if I put too much on on my um, light to medium skin, it will the color of this will show more than it's more than the desired level. So I don't really do that. So I wanted to try these other kinds. I have Cameo, which is almost as light as say um, any kind of white setting powder, like the white HD powders. I mean it's. It's just a teeny step down from being completely white. So I like this shade called Buff. And sheared out, I mean, this shade, it's still super light, you know? But when you put a sheer amount of this on, there it is on the finger, sheared out. I, I feel like it's not stark. It's not like some kind of stark, like, why is there white powder under her eye? This is more just, you know, a little lighter than my skin tone. So if you think you're about my skin tone, this will be a little bit lighter than your whole face skin. So I like that buff powder. I'm, I'm just like I've been in sort of an under eye concealer testing phase. I've also been testing all kinds of under eye setting powders lately. Um... Super excited to share a Mall of America haul with y'all. Yes, that's going to be um, my plan video-wise is that what's coming today will be the top ten products worth trying. Um, over the weekend, the my vlog, <laughs> my vlog from the Minneapolis trip will go up. Separate video from that will be my Mall of America haul. And I'm very excited because, guys, I tried some high-end stuff that you have never heard me speak of. <laughs> never, ever. <laughs> so, and then some things that are just kind of fun. So, yeah, and I'm sure some people will say, oh, she's not using drugstore makeup anymore. Yes, I'm using drugstore makeup, but I do have a couple of outrageously high-end things, and I think that it's cool to try that. <laughs> when in Rome, as I say, or when in Nordstrom. <laughs> I've never been to a Nordstrom before, folks. Carrie Underwood. Oh, yeah, I asked about music. <laughs> I love Carrie Underwood. What have I been? I've been liking um, that Hunter Hayes song, I Want Crazy. Um, does anybody like One Republic? The song called Counting Stars. I really like that. I think um, they sang that one on The Voice. Mm. Uh, Joe Nichols. Anybody, any country fans remember Joe Nichols? He's back. He has a song called Sunny in 75. Yeah, I sing that around the house all the time. And when I start singing it, Cupcake starts meowing. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got in terms of new music. <laughs> Um, was anyone watching? Was anyone watching the ESPYS last night? I enjoyed it so much, guys. Um, I was drawn in because John Hamm, who was of course Don Draper on Mad Men, was hosting. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch because of this. <laughs> and then they had some great stories. Um, I cried twice. Um, the Robin Roberts thing, which of course I've watched a whole, I think they did like an hour long 2020 or something on Robin Roberts story, which is amazing. I mean, she went from being a sportscaster, she got on GMA, um, breast cancer, then um, as a result of the breast cancer treatment, she had the issue where she needed the bone marrow transplant, and it's just all 
I love Robin Roberts so much, and they did a fabulous, and they devoted a lot of time to it on the ESPYs last night, and I thought rightfully so, um, but it just brings you to tears when she was talking about going through all that and at the same time losing her mom, like right before I think she started treatments, the actual treatments for the um, for the bone marrow situation, she had traveled down to New Orleans area and got to see her mom again and her mom passed away and that just gets me that same kind of thought got me a lot when I watched the special that they did before but it was very well done I loved Robin's speech that she got up and gave afterwards she was there with her sister who provided her um, with the like like she, Robin said they they have the same DNA you know um, but that was great and then one of the awards, you know that little boy who was got to play with the Nebraska football team? Um, and he was like, he was dealing with some form of cancer. And like as a dream of his, he got to be, be out there with the college football team. And like they, he ran and got a touchdown. And then the whole team like lifts him up and, sh and is cheering for him. And he got to go up there with his dad. And his dad spoke. And then the little boy said a couple things. And it was just like, oh, gets me. And, but it, it was really nice. The whole show, I mean, I thought it was really good. And the SBs are at ESPN. Um, it's like sports awards yeah. show, by the way, in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, um, okay, clothing, more clothing hauls, says Francie. Okay, I buy, I sometimes get clothing kind of sporadically and don't necessarily buy a lot at one time, but I'll have to kind of group together maybe, because I did get, most recently I got that dress that I wore to the, to the Minneapolis thing, and, um, which, by the way, do you ever see yourself in pictures and you're like, gosh, that really looks best when I'm standing up straight. <laughs> We've all been there. I know it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I got that dress. Um, I, I got this little shirt here recently in like a pretty orange tank top. I've been all about the tanks lately. I'm embracing my guns. Hashtag embrace your guns. <laughs> No, that may come across the wrong way on Twitter. Let's not do that. <laughs> yes, Tyler, by the way, the Mall of America blog, vlog, Tyler did an outstanding job. He got lots of video, and he interviewed people, like, in the line. <laughs> I say interviewed, but it, it's really cute. <laughs> and, and the you... The people who came could not have been sweeter, more amazing people. Like, if this is just a cross-section of who is watching my videos, I, like, love you even more than I fathomed beforehand because so nice. So, so nice. Favorite music artist back in elementary high school? Oh, when, okay, I just heard this because there's a 90s station on <laughs> there's a 90s station on Sirius XM, which I I love, and <laughs> uh, what I heard Christina Aguilera's "Genie in a Bottle," oh my gosh, that was my jam! Like that was my high school jam. Um, that uh, Britney Spears "In Sync." Um, I'm thinking of all the stuff like I watched on TRL, you know, Total Request Live on MTV. Mm. Oh my gosh, Boom It's Mandy met Joe Nichols, and he is the sweetest guy ever. I, I watched his, um, I watched, they do a, I think it's called, what is it called, Backstory? Might be called something else. On CMT or GAC, they do these great, like, one-hour um, programs, like, going through the life of different country artists. And I love, I love anything behind the scenes. I love anything that's, like, biographical sort of thing. And his story was very, very interesting. And so, um, yeah, I really liked that. By the way, I love the music. Um, Sigma was bumping some music during the 
event, and I so badly just wanted to stop and have a dance break, you know? Just dance. I did have to stop at one point and use the bathroom, which I would have held it had I known the bathroom was so far away. <laughs> I thought the bathroom was just going to be like in the back somewhere. So when she's like, do you want to use the bathroom? I'm like, oh, sure, okay. I, I could go. <laughs> but then it's like all the way down. Like, I wouldn't have probably left for that. Um, uh, where is Cupcake? I'll get her. She's probably napping in the sun sunbeams right now. Oh, um, if you're just getting here and you're talking about Talia, yeah, we talked about her at length um, just a little bit ago. Very, I mean, we're all just kind of devastated by that. Thank you so much, uh, Custom... Anime, custom animal art. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Anybody who says they've watched me for years, I'm like, wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you for not leaving me. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, um, I've, got, I've been sharing a lot of love because you guys have been so nice and the whole event was so nice. There was a comment somewhere. I can't remember where I saw it. Um, but, but just some random comment that said, um, "I don't like, I don't like Emily anymore because she dresses old and and has been acting old lately." <laughs> okay, you want to know the snarky response that I really wanted to say back was, "If this has anything to do with my love for the Golden Girls, I make no apologies." <laughs> um, <laughs> No, but I'm the same person. I'm the same person I've been all along. <laughs> same person, same. I mean, I don't act some certain way because of what I'm doing or anything like that. So, I mean, if I was going to sincerely respond to that, I guess I would say that, well, I'm 29 years old. I'm a woman who's been out in the working world some. I mean, I've had a very, you know, high-profile job where I, it was, I had to be mature, you know, and that's who I am. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I am who I am. I have, I have been called an old soul before, and I don't mind that, but I, acting old, I, how does someone act old? Like, I don't know. <laughs> what if? <laughs> That's what I should be saying more, right? What ifs or something. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, oh, my gosh. You guys want to know something interesting? I g got a call from, there's a TLC show called Extreme Cheapskates, and they posted on my on the Beauty Broadcast Facebook page, and they emailed me telling them, um, telling me to call them, and they're a casting person, and... First off, before I called, I um, got on the TLC website and I looked up Extreme Cheapskates. Okay, these are people who are like saving their urine and so they don't have to flush it. These uh, people are um, like, what was the one doing? Oh, she was like not using toilet paper, so she was, I don't even want to go there. Uh, <laughs> But, like, really extreme stuff. So I watched this, and I'm thinking, I'm not even going to call this lady because I'm not as extreme as these people. And if it has to do with extreme makeup, well, I'm not that, you know, I love my cheap stuff. I love my dollar store stuff. But could you really call me an extreme cheapskate? I don't know. So I, I just decided I probably wasn't going to do anything because I'm not who she's looking for. But when I found her post on Facebook, I was like, gosh, she's, probably really wanting to get something figured out here, at least know whether or not I am a fit. So I called her and she said, you know, just tell me a little bit about, like, are you really cheap in real life? And I'm like, well, I like bargain stuff, but, you know, I'm not, 
I, I just basically said I've seen the people who have been featured and I don't think I'm as extreme <laughs> as they are. I love my bargain makeup, but I love high-end makeup too here and there. So I'm not like exclusively cheap. And she was like, thank you so much for being honest with me because we've gotten a lot of people on the show who turned out to not be cheap and it was a big waste of time. <laughs> and I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't know where that person was coming from with that random comment because I was just thinking they probably don't know me or watch me to the point where they would know, but, like, I know my, just by the sound of my voice, I probably come across as not like a teeny bopper, which is absolutely fine by me because that's not who I am. You know, if you are that, fine. If you're not that, don't try to be that, right? Just be who you are. But I, what I want everybody to know is like, and if you're watching this, you know, um, I don't put on some kind of like an act like, this is who I'm going to be in my video today. You know, this is the way I'm going to act. No, I just get up, I, I turn my camera on and I just am. You know, I just am who I am. Take or leave. Totes. <laughs> AKA, yeah, I don't save my urine. I don't think I'm as extreme. <laughs> uh, but that just, that cracked me up. <laughs> but I, was, I, I thought it was cool because she was like, I really like your YouTube channel. And I've been watching some of your videos. This is the casting girl. And I'm like, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> because my next one coming out is high-end makeup worth trying. So <laughs> it really won't fit your... <laughs> um, uh, Carly K says, uh, what car do you drive? A uh, Nissan Murano. Aside from Cupcake, it's my other child. <laughs> you're not cheap and you're not old. But I do love the Golden Girls and I will make no apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, Mom's Makeup, the video I'm going to do, the vlog of the Sigma meetup. I am, I'm going to put that on my regular beauty channel, beauty broadcast, and that's going to go up. Look for that on Sunday. Yes. I'm, what is a teeny bopper? Did I age myself by using the term teeny bopper? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm 29. See, I ain't no spring chicken, but... Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who recognizes that there will just be ridiculous comments here and there. So, More dollar store finds. Yeah, I'm going to go to Fred's again. I'm going to go to Fred's again and find some more of that Ioni makeup and stuff. More of this. More of this kind of amazingness and share that with you. Regular day, regular day for me. Um, I think it's kind of cool that I, I don't feel like I have a necessarily a pattern type of day, you know, like do the same thing every day because different different things call for different duties. Like some days I'm going to do a huge buttload of editing and some days I'm not going to have any. But like I'm just looking at my little planner here and um, generally speaking if I'm going to shoot videos I'm going to do that in the morning um, I like to do that before all this gets messed up <laughs> even though some days it may look messed up even in the morning but um, I do a lot of that in the morning time and it's just kind of nice because naturally you know I shoot and then I go get all that video onto my computer. Some days I'll shoot a couple of things. Like you may have seen me look the same in a couple of videos. That's because I shot them on the same day. So I, if I'm going to shoot a video, it will happen in the morning hours. And then um, middle chunk of the day, I usually end up doing, I feel like I do a little bit of editing almost every day. Um, like today, what do I have to edit? Today I have some finishing touches to put on 
um, my vlog from the Mall of America thing. Tyler and I are, are, are actually, <laughs> the day I say I like to shoot stuff in the morning, Tyler and I are actually going to shoot something this evening, a little ending to our vlog. Um, what else? Uh, blogging. Blogging is kind of an afternoon thing for me. Um, I try to make it daily. I wasn't able to do that on Tuesday this week, but and I just kind of put, I try to sort out like in my planner what I want to what I want to blog about, and um, I don't generally do more than one blog in one day. I kind of do it like a day of type thing, except for the gloss daily stuff that has to happen early. Um, what else? I mean, it's just it's just a series of shooting, editing, blogging, and doing all that kind of thing, and just trying to get get it done before the day before evening time is kind of my goal and then that time usually sometimes some days I don't know when to get off the computer which is a problem and I need to work on that because like I'll think okay I'm gonna do tweets now and that I, I can spend hours and I'm a lot of times I hit the tweet limit for a day like there is a tweet limit so when I'm responding to people I'll hit that in an hour's time, like so many tweets in an hour, and then like I don't know when, but I have to wait a long time before going back. So, car tour. <laughs> oh, my car is so clean because I recently got it, so <laughs> I have not been messing it up at all. It's kind of, I mean, you might think it's boring on the inside. I'm not sure. Um, college major, uh, media communications. Where is Fred's in Southern Illinois? Um, Marion? Taser, I'm making a mental note for that. Because <laughs> I could get you some. Um, face of the day. Oh, I forgot. Face of the day. I've been rambling about things that I do. <laughs> Um, okay, I use this too, and I use the, I put some stuff away because I've already been talking about it. Um, okay, so today's face overall is kind of, <laughs> kind of light, but not really. Um, I used my Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup, and I'm looking... I'm looking oily as I look into the camera, but I really am not oily to the touch. But you know what we're going to do real quick? I'm going to face defend it. Maybe it's just the way I'm going to look on the webcam. I don't know. Ooh, Smudge McGee. What happened there? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just realizing. I had some smudges. Who was the culprit on that? Lash Discovery? Surely not. Um, okay, so I used the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation. I used um, a couple different concealers. I'm normally like a two concealer kind of person because I'll use one as a coverage type product, um, like redness or anywhere. I used the Revlon Photo Ready today light medium and then I use this Mally Age Revel concealer as like my my brightener type of concealer so I did that on the under eye um, then I used this makeup forever what did I use to set that today I believe I used a little bit of the well rested bare minerals well rested makeup forever pro finish powder um, elsewhere on the face just a little bit um, I like this. I like this a lot. Um, I like the coverage. I like the finish. I'm just trying to decide if it's so much better than something from the drugstore, you know? I used my Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzer and Sunny. Whoop, whoop. Hit and pan. Uh, I used Heather Silk. Oh, I, I did two things for blush. I did the Revlon Photo Ready and flushed. It's a cream blush right here. And I topped it with a little bit of this, um, the Wet n Wild Flushed. Urban Decay One Brand Tutorial could be done if I could would get some face products from Urban Decay, like concealer, 
foundation, that kind of thing. Um, what else? Oh, my highlight, I used this shade called Angelic from Tarte. It came in that, like, four-pack of, of blushes kind of thing. I don't know if that's still available. This isn't, it's nothing amazing. Um, it's, it's nice for a highlight, but it's not, like, um, not drastically different from, say, uh, Tiki from Hard Candy. On my eyes, I used this Milani eyeshadow primer, and then I used this base. Like I was talking about, using a creamy colored matte base on these Maybelline shadows really makes them pop. So this is the Sigma uh, Bear collection, and the shade is Persuade. So it's this creamy skin tone, no shimmer. And then I used Shocking Seas from Maybelline, and I used this shade all over the lid, a little bit of the... Uh, navy in the crease, a little bit of the navy under the eye. I lined my waterline with Master Drama and Sapphire Strength, this pretty blue. That's in my waterline. Is that still there? Has it lasted? Yeah, so that's still there. <laughs> and then I used on my upper lash line, I've reviewed this on my blog if you're curious, but the Master Duo in Navy Gleam. This is that crazy little eyeliner that has the little ball on the end and you turn it like it, it can give you a thicker line that way or a thinner line. Um, I don't love how the finish on it is slightly shiny because I feel like it makes your eye less defined when 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 liner picks up the light I don't love that because then it, it doesn't look even all the way across but it might be looking okay right now. Um, oh else the other things I did on the shadow so I used this. I blended out the top shade, which may not be showing. Um, I used the Sigma Purple in Allure. And I just used that really lightly. Um, it's hardly identifiable. And then I used that as a blending out shade. And then I used Elope, this matte creamy shade, as a highlight under the brow. And I used the Estee Lauder Automatic Brow Pencil on my eyebrows. I'm liking that. I'm, I'm really barely doing anything to them lately. I'm just kind of just going over them barely. Lash discovery on the lower lash line. I'm wondering sometimes when you get if you get something smudging down below your eye, I think sometimes it can be the fault of the concealer you put under there, not just the mascara, because this never really smudges on me, but I'm wondering if this Mally concealer, um, which is very uh, hydrating, I wonder if that caused that. Oh, Essence I Love Extreme Mascara. Crazy volume. Love that. Lips are this um, NYX Butter Gloss and Meringue. So that's what's given us the pinky lip here. Mm -hmm. That's a, it, it got a little bit of a hint of lilac in there. Which I, looking at myself in person, I don't know if I love that. But Oh, and, and some brow gel. <laughs> So that's the FOTD. Did I leave anything out? I tried to basket it all up. But gosh, there's a lot. But if you got it, you know, use it, right? Um, yeah, I can't fit it all back in there. Isn't that just the way it goes with packing, too? It never all fits back in the way you first put it in. <laughs> Um, the earrings are, were these from Claire's? I think these were probably Claire's. And they are a, like, little turquoise gem sort of thing. And the shirt's from TJ Maxx. I might have wrongly said Ross that. earlier. Oh, and some brow Oops. gel. Whoops. I had to reload. Um... Ooh, college and dorm tips. Um, general college tips, soak it up. Have fun while it lasts because real life will set in sooner than you think. <laughs> oh, I have so many days where I'm like, eh, I want to go back to college. I loved college. College was like, mm, I loved it. I loved everything I did. I loved the people, the friends, the activities. Like, I just loved college, so soak it up. Try to get as involved as you can in 
you know, different organizations and groups. If you're scared about meeting people, the easiest way to do it is to, you know, get involved in some sort of group or organization because then you will have people. And um, don't be afraid of just going up to people you don't know. Like if you're in, you know, the cafeteria, don't be afraid to go up to people because it's different from high school. People are different. People are more mature. And, I mean, just just be okay with, let yourself be a little more outgoing. And um, as far as, like, storage tips in a dorm room, I always lived in a dorm um, throughout all my college years. But in my junior and senior year, me and my roommate Beth had a pretty good-sized dorm room. And it was it was pretty nice, <laughs> and uh, storage and stuff like that. I didn't have like a huge makeup collection in college. Shocking, I know. <laughs> um, I had like one of these carts, you know, like the the carts that stand maybe two feet high, and has like a couple bigger drawers, and then a couple of like couple drawers like that deep, and then a couple skinnier drawers. I had one of those stuck under my desk or was it under my desk or kind of to the side, somewhere in there. I had that, and then I had like a little one of these, a little size, like maybe this back here, back there with the EOS lip balms on top. I had one of those, and that was pretty much it makeup-wise for me. I wasn't quite the crazy woman I am now, in that way anyway. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, as far as decor, I mean, me and my friend Beth, we really liked a lot of the same stuff, like cute stuff, putting up signs and pictures and, you know, uh, fluffy, pink, fun stuff, like, <laughs> um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe you got to talk to your roomie and see what they enjoy, but uh, Valerie Stewart said, college actually made me way more outgoing and outspoken. Um, yeah, and Vanessa says, how was high school for you? High school was actually, especially my later, there goes that cement truck again. Um, <laughs> um, high school was really an improvement over junior high. Junior high was my toughest time with friends and um, just bullying and stuff like that. That was my hardest time. But once I got into high school, I really looked at that as a time to open up and, and meet new friends and be friends with some of the older kids and um, just stop giving a darn about, you know, the people who were, you know, wanted to say mean things to me or anything like that. So I, I kind of looked at the transition as a time of, like, I'm not getting too deep here, but a time of like rebirth or spreading your wings, you know, getting out there and not worrying about it anymore and kind of like restarting. And so high school was nice, um, especially my later years. I just really felt like by the time I was a junior or a senior, the girls, you know, in my class, I felt like people grew up. I think things got better. Um, and I went to a very small school, but we were also combined. This was a big thing for me, too. Our school was not con consolidated with another school, but we were together for sports, for sp fall sports. So football and cheerleading, um, the neighboring school, you know, we were dealing with those kids for the sports activities. And so that was like a whole new group of friends as well, and that was really nice for me with cheerleading, like getting to, to you know, I about said play with other kids, <laughs> just, you know, have fun with other people, and so that was great, and then college was beyond comprehension. I loved it so much, and I just think you, you are responsible, though. Like, if you go through college and being bored and being lonely, and I think you're kind of responsible for your own direction, and because I think there are so many people. <laughs> there's there's so much potential. Um, but also, I went to a fairly small college, and I didn't feel lost in the shuffle where I went to school. Um, I know some huge universities, maybe that could be like extra intimidating just to go out and, okay, make friends. But still, I think there are a lot of groups. I mean, colleges are loaded with activities and groups for like every interest, every background, I feel like. So, um, that opportunity is there at, at any school, but I went to Monmouth College, 
not Monmouth University in New Jersey, but Monmouth College in Illinois, and it was just the experience of my of a lifetime. Like I just loved it. Um, I used to play the flute in high school. Yes, Carlene. <laughs> There goes that cement truck again. <laughs> yeah, I think it, everybody's tough times might come at a little different times. I think it depends on, you know, the setting you're in, the people you're around, and just what you're going through at the time, you know. When I was in junior high, like I said, my dad was my principal, and that was, that was kind of tough because if you weren't getting in trouble it was like oh well your dad must just be letting you off the hook no I just wasn't causing problems I was a kind of a quiet you know stay out of the way kind of kid so <laughs> I didn't want to cause problems because I would have gotten in more trouble than any of y'all whose dad was not the principal so going to St. Louis for a few days for vacation any suggestions of things to do while we're there besides the arch ball game and shopping ooh um you know what I think is fun is the Laclede's Landing area. There's a bunch of like fun like little bars and restaurants and stuff down there. Um, kind of down close to the riverfront area. Um, you can take like wherever you're staying, if you are a little ways away, you can take the Metro Link down there and there's just fun little places to go. And you can walk around. And I think it's kind of the area, it's been a couple years since I've been down there, but they kind of leave the street open and you can just Rome and it's fun. Um, where else? Uh, they got the Galleria Mall, the Galleria which is in I think Clayton technically but um, in that area they also have a container store. <laughs> Does the container store excite you? Because it excites me. Um, so there's that. There's some other like little beauty stores like beauty brands or um, things like that. Um, but you're get the Galleria will have the full Sephora store and Lush and those different beauty stores everyone likes. Um, and the shirt. Oh, thank you so much for everybody being interested in this shirt, by the way. It's from TJ Maxx. And um, the way it fits is it's kind of got this little tie thingy here right in front. And so, yeah. I guess I could, you know, go no tank top, let it be see-through, let my belly button hang out, but I opted not to. Flute. Da -da 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 -da. I, I always wonder, I think, Mom was asking me last time she was down, she was like, do you think you could pick that up and play it again? And I really think I could. Was it hard to find a job with that degree? Media communication? Um... Well, broadcasting specifically is known to be a pretty hard field to get into. So, yeah, I think that was hard, especially because I was looking, rather than sending 50 resume tapes across the country, I was looking in one city. So that was tricky, but had I really pursued other things, I think a communications degree is opens you up to a lot of things, really. It's a good degree to have, especially if you're kind of like, not sure where to go. I mean, improving your, your speaking skills and your, like I took classes in interpersonal communication. I took classes called advanced public speaking and small group communication. Like I had all these different kinds of, of classes where we would um, work in groups or work individually, give presentations and, and stuff like that. So I loved it. Would go back to college in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, no, really what I want is just the social aspect of college back. <laughs> I'm, I live very close to a college town, so I don't know, I could just grab some books and roam the campus and be creepy. No. <laughs> um, updated makeup collection, please. Gosh, it's 1034, what happened? Uh, yeah, I do need to, I need to do that because I've pretty well got my storage set up except for a couple things. Don't you always feel that way if if you're out there making videos too, don't you feel like before you want to do an updated collection you want things to be absolutely perfect and it takes a long time to get it perfect? <laughs> or you never feel like it's perfect? 
Um, um, uh, my email is beautybroadcast at hotmail.com. <laughs> Dan Gunner shirt is just fine. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> You guys are awesome. Um, gosh, uh, as always, we like to know what's going on in your life, in your world, what's been happening for you this week. I'm going to refresh my other little page here so I can load up your comments more fresh. Oh, did, we did not chipmunk. And where's Baker? Okay, first we're going to chipmunk. Here's, what, here's what's going to happen. We're going to chipmunk, we're going to get cupcake, and then we're going to talk about your stuff. Um, so first, chipmunking. Um, I'm trying to think if anybody at the meetup wanted to chipmunk or if I chipmunked in any pictures, and I don't think I did. I think I may have chipmunked with someone, but it wasn't caught on camera. <laughs> you put your paws up, lips up, eyebrows down. It shouldn't look good, but it will be funny. And, oh, I went to an alpaca store. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and then if you're at work, because some of you watch at work, you better be doing this with me. It'll be, give you good luck for the rest of the day. I promise. Look to the left. Subtle. Subtle but effective. It counts. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm going to go get Baker, and I'll be right back. This little one in the evenings, look at her. Baker. She's been laying with me every evening because she missed her mama. Didn't you? You've probably long forgotten about that now, haven't you? I love you. She says, hi, everybody. <laughs> You're mellow. You're mellow today. Uh oh, not anymore. <laughs> She's like, get off of me, woman. Okay. <laughs> I really want to put my hair up. But I just sweep it off to the side. Oh, and my hairdo that I did for the event, I like, I kind of put it off to the side like this, but I pinned it a little bit like back here behind my neck so it would stay to the side. It was, it, I shouldn't have probably done that because hugging people, it started to like come out of the way it was. It was a very precarious kind of hairdo. So I should have just went down, just pull it over and not worry about pinning anything. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, what you, this this is the segment we call your stuff. <laughs> Waiting for my appointment. Time to sign up for college. Um, oh, they're coming so fast. Gracie's visiting family in Houston and Atlanta. I am picking cat hair off my lips. Um, stealth chipmunking achieved. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um. Next two weeks, I will have band camp. Yay, band camp. That's my trombone. I'll only the, the instrument that would make that noise would be the trumpet, right? Um, head full of curls, quitting my job this week. Medication is being up for mental illness and might be going back into hospital in a mental health unit for intensive therapy, but I will still watch live broadcasts. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for keeping keeping me part of your routine, and I'm thinking about you. Moving across Europe on Saturday, holy cow. Um, signing my beauty school contract, oh, that's great. 
Nate's 94-year-old grandma is seeing a plastic surgeon for a harsh leg wound. Prayers would be appreciated. That's Taser. Um, yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Got cat hair on my lips. Um, animation test for a new job. Interesting. Um, having the 11 year old sis come over for a sleepover. Oh, sleepovers are fun. I'm going, uh, everything froze. <laughs> Doing laundry. Going with my pappy for his cancer treatments. Doing homework. Um, taking AP courses and have summer work. I have to walk dogs soon. Going shopping today for stuff for my apartment. Major issues with my youngest daughter, Clarice says. Need prayers. Husband coming home in nine days after six weeks away. Um, my daughter is having a play date, so I have some free time for YouTube watching. Thank you. I need to do more vlogs. Yes, I do. Working to get into shape for volleyball. The exercises that the coach gave us are intense. Ouch. Gosh, I, I love hearing. I love just hearing what you're doing and, and what you're dealing with. Because I think about you guys a lot more than you maybe even realize. Um, cleaning up the golf balls, says Rachel. <laughs> Hi from Belgium. Um, going to my mom's 40-year-old friend's baby shower this weekend. Changing jobs to a new field and trying to be brave about it. That takes a lot of courage. Um, I have that event with my dad and my whole family and 400 more peeps. That's Sophia. Sophia in Portugal. My boyfriend and I have our licensing exam. Registered nurse in three weeks. Moving to Fargo, North Dakota on Sunday. Rebecca, I'm glad you're doing it, doing it in the summertime. <laughs> there was someone from Fargo at the event. Um at the event over the weekend, Fargo, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Florida, Florida, Chicago. Um, that was so cool. Looking for a new job. Currently, I work at a cookie store. Woot, woot. That's Janessa. I would like to work at a cookie store. Have lots of snacks. <laughs> uh, I have work at my summer camp at 12. It's pool day. Not looking forward to spending the day outside 96 plus weather. It's hot everywhere, isn't it? Oh, good. Kristen Chipmunk on camera. Good. <laughs> Eating cinnamon sugar toast. Never watched you live. This is great. Awesome. Went to Red Lobster this past weekend for the first time for my sister's birthday meal. Oh, those biscuits. Those biscuits are good. And Lauren is working on ACT prep. Uh-oh, I'm getting a phone call. I can't answer it right now, though, because I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, training for an Olympic distance triathlon. You guys, could we have any more variety of things going on? I mean, really. Truck driver hubby just got pulled in on what could be the beginning of a big project. Work has been so slow lately. This could be a huge blessing. That's awesome, Wendy. Yay! Going on first vacation in two years. That's Anna. Woohoo! I haven't done this dance yet today. <laughs> We've been talking about so much stuff, and we don't even know what our what is our hashtag. Emotional, emotional beauty broadcast. <laughs> Working for the weekend. I hear you. It's, hey, uh, the weekend, is, as Robin Mead would say, Thursday's connected to Friday, <laughs> if that means anything to you. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for taking time to be here, to watch, to share, to um, ask questions, to support each other, because that's what it's all about. It's, I mean, if we've learned anything from this week and what we talked about with um, Talia. I mean, if she's taught us anything, wouldn't that be to cherish every single day, live in the moment, be present, be happy, and be grateful for everything you have. 
practice gratitude. That's one of the best things we can do. So thank you so much for tuning in and for, for spending time with me because I really feel like I'm spending time with you. Even though I can't see you, I kind of visualize you a little bit. So <laughs> um, good luck to everybody who has either difficult, exciting, or things they're nervous about or things they're excited about doing in the coming week. Um, I wish you the best. I'll keep you in my prayers. And I, I love you and I want to give you a hug, <laughs> even though I can't. I'm thinking about you so much. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you later on this afternoon in a video. Um, early evening, late afternoon, that'll be coming up. And a blog post. And he is not Cupcake, right? Or what are we talking about? I'm not sure. I'm lost. Cupcake's a she, though. <laughs> so thanks again guys um, I hope you have a great rest of your day have a safe weekend if you're traveling on vacation be really safe and careful and I will see you next time bye